Hello there, my name is Dave Baines. I'm a flavour chemist and I'm a visiting professor at the University of Reading. And uh, I run a course with my colleague Richard Seal, who's a, a food scientist, and the course is entitled Creating Thermal Process Flavours. And on this course, delegates are exposed to the Maillard reaction how to use the chemistry of the Maillard reaction to create meat flavours. We give them two days of instruction, we then set them free to create their own flavours and they are applied to food products where we evaluate them. So that by the time they reach the end of the course, they are able to go back to their organisations and they are able to produce their own beef, chicken, pork, lamb and other meat flavours. I want to take a small element from the course and I've called it the essence of meat flavour. Just a very small element. And on the screen you can see the compound base 2 methyl 3 furan disulfide. This is a very potent flavour chemical. It's meaty, it's roast beef, it's roast rib of beef in character. And this is what's created in meat when you roast a piece of beef in the oven. And you can see the threshold, 0 0.00002 parts per billion. Now nobody can relate to that. But if we look at the threshold of sugar, that's 20 parts per million. Below 20 parts per million, 18, 15 parts per million, it won't taste sweet. But above 20 parts per million, water will taste sweet, increasingly sweet. We convert that to time, that's one second in 17 hours. This flavour chemical, bis 2 methyl 3 furan disulfide, on a time scale is equivalent to one second in 1.6 million years. That's about the length of time that Homo sapiens have been roasting meat. So you don't need many molecules of this to actually get roast beef. It's formed from its monomer, 2 methyl 3 furan thiol, which has got more of a chicken, salmon, tuna character, but again a very low threshold, equivalent to about one second in 10,000 years. Still a very potent flavour chemical. So where do these come from? Where do these compounds come from when you're roasting a piece of beef in your oven? And I'm going to start with the sulphur. Where does the sulphur come from? And the sulphur comes from the amino acid cysteine. It comes from the Strecker degradation reaction, as it's called, where cysteine reacts with a sugar fragment and it forms an intermediate called an imine and then it breaks down to form a captoacetaldehyde and an amino ketone, which can then dimerize to form pyrazines, roast type compounds. But the route we want it to take is a very specific route for this reaction to form the hydrogen sulfide that we need. This is the powerhouse of meat flavor. This is the engine room where hydrogen sulfide is produced and ammonia. And it's that hydrogen sulfide which is incorporated into the flavour chemicals that form meat flavour and the ammonia is incorporated into compounds like thiazoles that form the roast character. So cysteine is one part of it. Back to the molecule, where does the carbon skeleton come from? Where does the framework come from? And now we look at the Maillard reaction. And we're starting with raw meat. Raw meat contains RNA, ribonucleic acid, which breaks down to ribonucleotides with enzymes. And it liberates ribose. And this is the other half, the reaction between cysteine and ribose. Now ribose reacts in the Maillard reaction to form what we call a 1-deoxyzone. And that is because the 1-carbon doesn't have an oxygen function on it, as we can see. This cyclizes to form a compound called norfuranyl and this is then hijacked by hydrogen sulfide 
to form the methyl furan thiols that are at the root of meat flavour and then these can be oxidised to the dimer. So that's where this compound is formed in the Maillard reaction. But that's not the end of the story because it's also formed by other means. The thermal degradation of thiamine. Thiamine's a loner, it breaks down on its own. It doesn't need anything to react with. Under the pyrolysis conditions in, in the oven, when beef is being roasted, the thiazole ring breaks open and a fragment drops off. A hydroxy mercaptor ketone is formed. This cyclizes and lo and behold, we get 2-methyl-3-furan-frion and we then get the bisdisulfite, the very powerful compound. So isn't, isn't that amazing that it's formed from two roots? What a massive coincidence, but the story isn't over. Thiamine is vitamin B1. We've also got ascorbic acid, vitamin C in meat. And reaction of ascorbic acid with cysteine forms a series of sulfur compounds, one of which is our 2-methyl-3-furanthiol. And ascorbic acid exists in two forms, as dehydroascorbic acid. And as dehydroascorbic acid, it oxidizes these compounds to form the dimers. And once again, we get our bisdisulfide, our powerful, potent beef flavor compound being formed from three roots. Isn't flavor chemistry amazing? Just summing up, ribonucleotides produce the ribose, which produces the norfuraniol. The norfuraniol reacts with hydrogen sulfide to form 2 methyl 3 furan thiol. It can react with other things like methane thiol from methionol to form another meaty compound. But it's also formed by the breakdown of thiamine and by the reaction of ascorbic acid. So it's formed from ribonucleotides, from vitamin B1 and vitamin C, and of course, dimerizes to the powerful meaty compounds. That is the root of meat flavor. So we have the character impact compounds, the 2-methyl-3-furanthiol and all its associated compounds and dimers. Without those, we would not have meat character. But then we need species character. And that's where lipids come in, the fats, to get beef, pork, chicken, lamb and other species of meat. And then we've got the pyrazines, the thiazoles, the thiazolids, furfuryl thiol. These compounds form the cooked and roasted notes of meat character. So on the course, we introduce delegates to the toolbox. I've talked about one aspect, one very precise aspect of the Maillard reaction in the center, but people on the course get the background to every other compound they can use to make authentic meat flavors and then apply them into food products. So what we do on the course for delegates over five days, we take them from the chemistry to commercially realistic meat flavors. Thank you very much.